Welcome back. We're talking about how to import data from Microsoft Excel into R Studio. It's pretty easy to do. There's a couple of tricky edge cases, like how do you get data from a separate sheet or from a part of a sheet into, into R using your code. It's not difficult. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. We're going to briefly revise uh, CSV files, but that's not difficult. Um, one of the things that I think people struggle with very often, especially if you're new to R, is your working directory. How do you find it? How do you change it? Et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to look at that as well. Uh, the first thing I'm going to tell you is hopefully you've learned by looking at other videos about the Tidyverse. I always start any coding off by loading the Tidyverse set of packages. The Tidyverse is a collection of packages that expands the vocabulary of R. And we're going to use one of the packages that comes with the Tidyverse called Read Excel. Read Excel in this lesson. Now, interestingly, if you've installed the Tidyverse set of packages, Read Excel is on your computer. But unlike a lot of the sort of core Tidyverse packages like ggplot and dplyr, Read Excel isn't automatically loaded when you load the Tidyverse. So you have to call it separately. Okay, so that's just worth mentioning. So we've called the Tidyverse, but we've separately called Read Excel using the library uh, read Excel function. Okay, so that's the, the one thing that isn't obvious to people, so I'm just pointing that out. The next thing is this. I'm going to talk about working directories, right, and, and how to set them, how to find out where, where your working directory is. In general, the best practice when you start working in R and you start a project is to create a new project. Don't just create a new uh, R file and start coding away. Create a project. If you start a project in R, it will automatically set your working directory to the file where that project is sitting. Okay, and you, at that point, you don't need to worry about working directories at all, and that is the best practice. However, I know and understand that people don't always work in projects, so let's just deal with this working directory issue uh, sort of once and for all. If you want to know what your current working directory is, uh, you can click on Get Working Directory, Control Enter, and it says here that my working directory is at User Greg Martin Documents. Well, that might not be where we want to work. Okay, our data is sitting somewhere else. You can see here I've got a, a, a folder called YouTube Channel, and I can click on that. There's some data inside there, and that's really where I want to be. Now, there's a couple of things you can do here. You could just go in here and say, Set this as my working directory. And if I click on that, it's going to provide set, blah, 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 and it's going to set that as the working directory. It is better practice if you're wanting rep 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 reproducible code. In other words, you want your code that you can, is to set the working directory yourself, and that's pretty easy to do. You say set working directory, and then you put in the sort of address of that working directory. I will tell you something that's very frustrating, right? If you were to, let me, let me get up my finder. Okay, here is this folder that we're dealing with. If I were to cut and paste that, that address right there, notice something about the address, and, I'm gonna, and it, it might be a little bit small on the screen at the moment, but in between each of the, the, the sort of uh, branches of the address, the slash is going downwards, and R wants the slashes to go upwards, or people say backwards slash and forward slash. The slash is going the wrong way. So you can cut and paste that address into this set working directory, but then you've got to change the slashes. Wait for it, this gets even more complicated, and, and this, is, this drives me off bonkers. If you're working on a Mac, then the slashes work in the way that it, 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 it sits uh, in, 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 your, in your finder. So very frustrating, drives you bonkers. This is one of the reasons why I say work in a project open a project, do everything in a project, your working directory is set. But if you have to set your working directory, that's how you do it. Okay, so boom, shakalaka. So if I run that code there, well, I've already set my working directory. Okay, my working directory now is in this place here. I've deliberately put the data in a separate folder called data because I want to show you how when you use the functions uh, from Read Excel, you need to tell it not just it will automatically start at your working directory and look for the data there, but you can say, well, look for the data inside a folder that's at my working directory. In this case, we've called the folder data. Uh, keeping your data in a separate folder is kind of a good idea, and I like to do that. It makes your working directory a little less messy, and I, I usually create a number of folders inside my working directory. So let's look at the code now that we've got all of that said. Um, the first thing that I will say, if I look inside data here, I've got a couple of files. One of them is a CSV file called Friends. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values. Um, it's very simple data. It's very flat. There's no, uh, you know, bells and whistles. You can save 
uh, uh, you can save Excel spreadsheets as a CSV file, but it might lose some of the nuance. So, you know, for example, it's not going to keep, for example, some of the sort of um, formatting uh, that, that you may have had. So if you've got a CSV file, and sometimes you'll download data off the internet and it'll come as a CSV file. So this isn't uncommon for you to see CSV files. As here we've got read.csv and you put in inverted commas data. So that's the folder that we're looking at. Uh, uh, forward slash or up, I like to say upward slash and then the name of the file dot CSV and that will that will read in there you go that dot now it, and there's this little little data set that I created you may want that to be an object right so we may want to call this uh, data frame or something and then you run that and then it lands up okay what about, okay I've made a little mistake there I want that to be that okay now it's created a little data object happy days and we can work with that but for the rest of this lesson i'm not going to create a new data object every time i read in data i just want to show you how to read in the data you know that this is how you create a data object when you want to so let's keep so that's a csv file we'll read it in easy peasy lemon squeezy nothing to see there if we look at microsoft excel there are some nuances and some complications and let's talk about those here's an excel spreadsheet and i've deliberately not put my data on the first sheet Right, because I want to teach you how to find, how to tell R to go and fetch it from somewhere else. I've stuck the data on the second sheet, and I've also not put it starting up in the top left-hand corner. I've popped it over here, and we want to tell R to fetch that little square of data. I've deliberately left some blanks. I've put an NA over there. I've done a few things here that we're going to use R to kind of fix and clean up as we go along. I've also got a third sheet, and here I've deliberately created some odd names. I've got two... Uh, variable names that are the same. Uh, there's a couple of oddities, and we're going to talk about how to clean that up in just a second. But let's start with this little bit over here. Right, let's go back to R Studio. The first thing is we want to read in an Excel spreadsheet. We've already loaded the package uh, read Excel, so we've got access to this function right here, read underscore Excel. As with the CSV, we start off by state in inverted commas stating the, the 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 name of the folder that it sits in and the name of the file dot xlxsx all in inverted commas so the first argument is the address and the name of the file that you're wanting then you can add arg arguments to that so in this case i'm saying sheet equals friends you'll notice if we look at this excel spreadsheet i've called the sheet friends you sometimes give sheets names i've called it friends down there so you say sheet equals friends skip two Okay, and I'll tell you what I'm doing there, and you don't really need that line of code, but I'm just wanting to show you. If you say skip two, it skip, skips the first two uh, rows, and it'll start looking after that. The reason I'm saying in this particular example you don't need to do that is because we are specifically, uh, we're specifically uh, in the next argument uh, stating what, what range of data we want. So we've got B3 to D8. If you look here, that's B3 is there, D8 is there. That's our data. Right, and because we've we've stated the actual uh, range of data, we don't really need to say skip uh, rows one and two. Usually, the data kind of starts over here somewhere, and you can just say skip it. It makes it a bit easier. And if you do that, it'll collect the data from however you know however big the data set is. So that is a useful function. Right, here I've said, and and if I read that in, let's just run that. Here's the data, um, and it's read that in. Now, the next thing I want to say is. I, up here I said sheet equals friends, and I just wanted to show you that you could also say sheet equals two. It's the second sheet. Here I've skipped out that, and if we run that, we get the same thing. Okay, so you can give the number of the sheet or the name of the sheet. Either works. Just wanted to show you that. Right. You can also specify uh, the class, the variable classes. Right. So. R will take a best guess and usually get it right, but you may want to specifically specify. So we've got another, we've got a, here we've got a, an argument called column or col types, column types. If you put in guess, it will take a best guess. And that's the default, by the way. If you didn't have this argument in at all, it would put use the guess um, kind of uh, feature for all, all of the columns. So if you say guess, it'll do its best guess. But you can specify that you want it to be numeric. You can specify that you, you're looking at text, and it will then make the class of those variables uh, the, the, uh, numeric or, or character. Interestingly, there's not a you cannot force it 
into uh, uh, classifying something as a factor. So if, if, you know, if it's a categorical variable, uh, it, will, it will produce it as a text, uh, a, a character variable, and you will have to, in your code, recode that, uh, and will not recode it, re re reformat that and make that into a factor. So I found that interesting. Um, anyway, so, so that's how you, and if we run this code, let's run it. If you look at the top over here, you can see character dbl this just means a numeric variable and then character it's 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 these it's thinking of those as character variables if you look at the dots that we've got we we had a missing value over here let me bring the spreadsheet up okay we've got a missing value there we've also got we've someone's typed in na here and na is usually what we use to specify that something's missing so and this is this reflects the reality of sucking data into, into, into R is that it's often messy. People don't provide you necessarily with nice, clean and neat and tidy data. You have to fix these things. So there's a missing piece there. There's an NA over here. There's something missing over here. We've got a zero there under height. So Peter here is considered to be a zero height. Well, that can't be right. Uh, so maybe we want to think of that as missing as well. So let's see how we can deal with that as we pull our data in. We can specify what needs to be considered as NA or missing, right? So firstly, if something's blank, so this is a concatenation and everything inside this concatenation will be now considered to be NA or missing in the data that gets pulled in. Uh, if, if it's blank, it'll be considered missing. If it sees NA, it will consider it to be missing or, you know, or not available. And if it sees a zero, it will consider that to be missing. And if we run this code, Boom shakalaka, it's got it all right. It's put NA, which stands for not available or missing in all the right places. So happy days. The next thing I just want to talk to you briefly about is the fact that some of the time you may have two variables that are have the same name, or you might be a little bit worried about the naming of the variables. I've created a little sheet here with variables that have got odd names. We've got January, January, month of February, blah, 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 blah. So let's just have a quick look at, at how to deal with this. We, first of all, might, we may have a very large data set with many, 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 many variables, and it might not be obvious whether or not uh, the variables are unique or not. So you can use this dot names underscore repair equals and say check unique. And if you run that, and, and we've used sheet three here, blah, blah, blah. If you run that, it's not going to let you read it in if any of the variables are duplicated. It'll, an error will pop up, and if you do that, boom shakalaka, there's our error, error and it tells us that, it's, uh, that there's this duplicated Jan. Right. You can make all of the variables unique with na dot names repair, underscore repair equals unique. Okay, and if we run that for January and February, with, with the two Januaries, it's got Jan 1 and Jan 2. There is a way to kind of make that into Jan underscore one, Jan underscore two. Uh, like I'm not too bothered one way or the next, and I'll tell you why in a second. Let's just deal with this. You can repair all the variable messiness with this universal names repair equals universal. And that does a few things. I'll just run that and I'll show you. Um, it takes month of February, for example, and puts month dot of dot Feb. Um, it, it, it removes funny things like this percent sign and puts a dot there instead. It does, there's a couple of things this does. I'll tell you why I'm not too anxious about this particular feature. I think if you're going to start messing around with the names of your variables, you really want to control that yourself. You don't want some sort of automated uh, process to do that for you. You want to control that because you're going to be working with these variables. You're going to be, you want to know what they are and why it is that they're called what they are. So what I would do, my advice to you is this. If you've got a large data set and you're not sure if there's any duplication, run this names repair, check unique. Find out if there's any duplication or not, okay? If there is duplication, I would fix that myself, right? With, you know, you know, with renaming functions. I would just do that myself. I'd write some code and rename the variables in a way and in an order that makes sense to me. I think some of these other f features are, you know, kind of nice but unnecessary. But I thought I'd show that to you. I think the name, the unique check uh, could well be useful. Hope all of this was useful. Okay, there are other sort of n nuances to, to bringing data in, but, you know, for the sake of uh, anybody starting out, this, this is probably what you need to know. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share, etc., etc. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Thank you.